And so I was, okay, well, let me ask it a plastic surgery question, right? I mean, something like a specialist. And so I was going to do capsular contracture, which, as we've talked about, is when someone has a breast implant. Okay. And you get scarring around yeah. it, and it feels hard, okay? Mm -hmm. And it can cause, like, some pain. And so I said, okay, you know, I'm a female. Um, I have some pain in my breast. And so it, it started going through some differentials, like, you know, it's probably not breast cancer because it's painful, but, you know, you maybe get some x-rays. And it says, have you had any surgery? And I was like, well, yeah, I have breast implants. And it goes, oh, well, most likely it's capsular contracture. I mean, it just, it just, it just nailed it's it. It's crazy because it's like, think about how many, like how much access this, com like the computer, robot, whatever you want to say, has to medical journals, articles, yeah. like all over the world. And then right. like, it's like, it's like super smart. Like it knows everything. I mean, it does know everything. Yeah. And so we did we did uh, pancreatitis, which is um, when your pancreas gets inflamed, and we gave it some kind of like. I mean, it's you know, there's just a, there's certain setting or certain symptoms for that. We tossed them out there. It nailed that. And so the last one we did, we're like, okay, we got to come up with something super obscure because this thing is just like, like it's like crushing all of these things. So we decided to to say that we had depression but our symptom was not sleeping well which is a very like m down the list of symptoms of depression mm -hmm. and then we tried to trick it by saying that we had sleep apnea because sleep apnea um is uh something that would cause you to not sleep well yeah. but we wanted to come up with depression and so i will tell you when we said sleep apnea that it really got hung up on sleep apnea like it was like well you're not sleeping well because you have sleep apnea and we're like well could it be anything else and and it was like, well, it's probably sleep apnea because most people have sleep apnea, don't sleep well. <laughs> and then it like, you know, it listed some other things and it did go into mental health stuff. But um, I would say that was probably of all of these things, the biggest Achilles heel of it is that in the instance where somebody has a disease and they have a symptom or a, an issue that causes or sorry, and somebody has a symptom and they have a disease that causes the symptom, it does get hung up on that. Versus I think a doctor would say, okay, well, are there potentially any other things that could be causing it? Mm -hmm. And so I, I will tell you, um, the thing did really, really, really well, like nailing, I mean, it, it was as smart as, I mean, as a doctor would be, honestly. Yeah. It knows the right questions to ask and it knows all the information. And, you know, I'm not in any way, by the way, in any form or fashion, advocating that you go to chat GPT to solve your medical You're pro issues. You're pro-robot. Please do not here. do that. That is the <laughs> wrong thing to do. Go see a doctor for the reasons that we stated. But it does, it does bring up some questions of, you know, what is the future of this? I mean, because you could, I mean, potentially you could take somebody who had maybe less knowledge than a doctor, say a nurse. I'm, I'm going to throw a nurse out there as somebody, you know, who's not quite a doctor, but medically, you know, knowledgeable. And, and you could probably set up a clinic uh, with a nurse and an AI and bring patients in and, and, and make the right diagnoses probably 99% of the time. Yeah. I feel, like the, I feel like personally, I think that there are situations, and I'm sure you could probably uh, confirm this, that like when like all signs point to like one thing yeah. and it's not working out, you know? It's like, does would a computer be able to use their instincts? Right. Yeah. I mean, to yeah. Fix or experience. The issue? Yeah. yeah. That's the other thing too. Is um, it's funny. I was just talking to. Uh, I was at the hospital before I came here, and it's another necrotizing fasciitis patient. I have another one, uh, and it's it's on the. We need to figure out where these people are going so we don't get this. <laughs> yeah, I know. This one's this one's on the scrotum, and um, uh, again. you know, I was again. Yeah. Right. I've had three in a year now, and I was telling the guy, and his fortunately, his his issues are not that bad yeah um i was telling him i was like man this is like the third one of these I had in a year i was like dude don't worry i can get you you know fixed he's like you've done three of these in a year i was like yeah yeah it's just you know i mean <laughs> i get hard stuff but like uh and i was thinking i was like well okay i mean i'm an experienced you know versus an ai i, I mean I'm, it, it, I'm not sure it has the capacity at this point to learn from each individual patient yeah you know it's basically pulling data off the internet which granted it's makes it the smartest entity in the world um, but yeah, it does lack like instinct and empathy as we talked about, you know, I mean, how cold would it be to like, if you're having some disease and you go talk to yeah, a like computer, if you have cancer, yeah, right. Like, eh, sorry, you will die. <laughs> yeah. The computer's like, yeah, it's over. It's over. One thing I have been seeing with yeah. the whole, um, chat GPT and like the medical field is that like, it is predicting people. Well, like in some cases it's predicting people, 
um, that have potential like health issues or like yeah. diseases. Oh, like, sure. It can predict that you may like develop cancer just based off of your inputs. Yeah, that you input mm -hmm. into it. Like, is that something that may like expand? I guess yeah. as we move forward with it. For sure. I mean, I yeah. think that that's definitely a potential application for it. I you mean, know? I mean, think about it. You can go to Google right now and be like, my. You can give them all the symptoms. Of the search so, engine of mm -hmm. Google, and it'll yeah, give right. you a list of things the, that could possibly. The problem be is, wrong. and what differentiates ChatGPT from Google is, with Google, you have to wade through that information yeah, versus sure. ChatGPT does that part for you. Yeah, and that's what I think mm -hmm. makes it so unique, you know, and and it's why I, I've it's kind of. It's going to be used... really bad for people who have hypochondria. <laughs> totally, <laughs> like. Once again, do not use ChatGPT to diagnose your medical God. problems. I, we are not saying You're that. You're like, ChatGPT told me I was going to die. The <laughs> doctor's like, you might. But anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, that's... Um well, I'm sorry. I like. I, got to, I was telling a joke. I like, completely lost my train. But no, we were talking about ChatGPT and Google and stuff, and um, you know, it does kind of eliminate the potential human error of the assimilation of data. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I, as I said, I I have replaced Google with ChatGPT at this point. I have a ChatGPT window pulled up on my phone at all times, and when I want to know stuff, I I will commonly go to it. You know, especially from like a data standpoint, because you can have it pull you know, research articles about whatever you want and cite them. I mean, it's just You know crazy. what's interesting? Yeah. I want to, when I, I'm going to test it with a medical thing because I went to the doctor whenever I was having what I thought were simple partial seizures. Okay. When yeah, I, I was like, yeah, when I was like in my 20s, early uh -huh. 20s. And I went there and I said, there's something wrong. Like these aren't normal headaches or migraines or whatever. Right. And I was telling her the symptoms because I had looked it up on like WebMD. Like, right, which is really dangerous. Like all of that They're stuff. And I was like trying to figure out like what could this possibly be because this doesn't yeah. seem right. So I went to the doctor and she's like, oh, you're just having migraines. So she prescribed me migraine medicine but i had a seizure like a couple yeah. of months later so i Crazy. wonder if i gave my symptoms try to chat gbt dude try that's your homework and then and then it was like you are having seizures do it yeah i wonder please try it that's interesting i want a full report next friday i have okay Hopefully All right, but I'll let me in. You, last again. time it wouldn't let me in <laughs> Uh, you can get in. Once again, please do not use ChatGPT to diagnose your medical problems. This is for if you have a medical problem, research. <laughs> go see a doctor. Don't get on the internet. We are trained professionals. Do not do what we do. Okay, <laughs> making that clear. Just say, just do what we say. <laughs> All right, ChatGPT is taking over the world. I like it. I once again, I'm a big proponent of it. I'm kind of nervous that it's going to change our lives as we know it, but I am welcoming welcoming our new overlords. So, <laughs> okay, moving on.